What's up everybody, this is Jake, and today on Somewhat Techie with Jake, we're going to be getting Don't Starve Together, working split screen on PC using Nucleus Co-op. You can check out their website, or you can download from their GitHub, which I personally prefer. Um, so let's go ahead and jump right into this, where we're going to go check out the releases. And we're going to be downloading release 2.0, Alpha 8. Alpha 9 is a little bit different on how the program works, and I haven't messed with it too much. Um, but I did get it working with Alpha 8, so let's just go ahead and download that. Go ahead and save it. I already have it on my desktop here, so no need to download it again. I'm just going to extract the folder here. And I'm going to rename it nCoop just to make it a little bit easier to find. And there you go, there's Nucleus Co-op. So we're going to go ahead and open that up, click on the games, and this is um, pretty much how it handles all its games here. And we're going to create a new folder called Don't Starve Together. Make sure the D, S, and T is all capitalized. And uh, inside this folder is where it contains the Steam INI and the Steam DLL files that it uses um, when splitting the game up. Now unfortunately, if you go look in your Steam directory and you do not starve together, there is no INI file. You have your Steam API DLL, but the INI is non-existent. Now the a way I got it to work was I downloaded a cracked version, um, the same version as this one, so it's the most up-to-date one, and pretty much I used it just to grab those two files. So as you can see here, I have it downloaded already I'm extracting it opening up the bin and just real quick here you guys can see I got it from IDG games if you guys wanted to grab that for yourselves there's the INI file and the DLL file so the DS INI I'm going to rename to Steam API INI so it matches up with the program and you know is named exactly what it's looking for and we're gonna go ahead and open that up and edit a few things you can open it in notepad or any code or text editor you use I use VS code in this tutorial for example so what we're looking for is the account ID and the username so the program generates those on its own so we can actually delete those um, which will give every single person um, a different name so you can play on the same server. Let's go ahead and change offline mode to one as well Since we want to do a local LAN and double check everything. Yep, that's it I'm gonna show you the JavaScript file um, Pretty much this is how it handles the game But down here somewhere, let me wrap the words real quick Didn't mean to use that. Tried to use the hotkey, but it's, <laughs> I guess it's for something else. But as you can see here, the user name and the account ID is actually provided by the program, and each new screen that's added, it just adds one to it. So every player can be on the same server and not have any issues with names being the same. I had that problem in the beginning, but figured that out fairly quickly. Perfect. So now we got all the game files. What we're going to do is get the server ready to be ran so we're going to go ahead and go into our steam directory don't starve together bin of course and then we are actually going to run the don't starve together dedicated server so what this is going to do is create all necessary files needed to host the server it's going to store it in a temporary folder either in your app data or um, in my case for example my documents inside of a KLEI folder. And right here, it's just showing you, you need a cluster INI file. It gives you the instructions on how to get it. I, you know, I kind of figured out it doesn't really work well for offline server. It's more for a normal online server. But I have a way here that uh, makes creating this file on your own fairly easy. But what I'm going to do here to make this on you guys is create a zip file and upload it. It's going to have the Steam API. DLL as well as the, you know, the cluster file we're working on now. Just 
Steam in offline mode here. So I can close that. I'm actually going to run the game from the Steam directory itself. In Nucleus Co-op, if you try to hit the host game button, the game will crash. You can only browse for a game, you know, which is why we have to get this set up ahead of time. When the game loads up, you hit play, play offline. So we're just going to hit host game, new world together, cooperative, we'll just name it Jacob's Tut World. Just put a random description, just throw ZZZ in there or something. Okay, so pretty much we did that just to generate the world. As soon as it's done doing this, next to the lobby, we're going to go ahead and close it out and uh, try to use it on Nucleus Co-op and see if, uh, if everything goes as planned. Cool, so that's up and going. We can go ahead and close that out now. And now for the fun part. So you can either um, plug in some controllers into your PC and play split screen doing that. If you have dual monitors, you can do one screen on each side, it doesn't matter. But after closing the game, after hosting the server, we are going to actually run the dedicated server one more time, which now it has all the files it needs and we'll be able to host. Cool, so we'll just go ahead and minimize that, close everything out for now. And we're going to open up Nucleus Co-op. And like I said, you can have either controllers plugged into your computer, play it that way. Um, but what I do is I actually use my NVIDIA Shield. So we'll get into that a little bit after I add the game here. So all I'm doing is hitting search game, navigating to my Steam directory, and adding the Don't Starve EXE. As you see here, it's asking for some controllers, which you can split up many different ways. So I'm gonna go over to my NVIDIA Shield real quickly and launch the Game Stream app, which I've added a manual game on there, which is called Desktop, which just takes you right to my desktop. It also allows my computer to pick up the controllers too, which is pretty awesome. Okay, cool. Oh, it looks like I have everything on the wrong screen here. That's all right. Um, I'll just swap everything over real quickly. But before I do that, I need to make sure I enable multi-controller on the NVIDIA Shield game stream. I don't know why it's and you have to do it, but you do. So there that is. I enable multi-controller. So now on Nucleus Co-op, it will show I have two controllers. So there's one. I just have to press a button on the second one to get it to pop up here. There we go. I'm going to split mine vertically. Since I'm using it on my bedroom TV, I feel like vertically over horizontally gives me a bigger field of view and looks a little bit better. Next arrow. I don't know what goes in the next section. It's always blank, so I just hit the play button. And what it's going to do is going to launch two instances of the game. So while it's readjusting, I noticed it uh, said enable controller. So I just hit A on both of my controllers real quick. And it seems like they're working so far. So, you know, one controller controls one side, the other controls the other side. And I'll give you a little peek at what it looks like on my TV. As soon as it's done loading here. So that's what it looks like on the TV. So it is split screen, and you can see here I'm just figuring out what controller goes to which side. So they go just like that. I go ahead and hit the play button. You gotta make sure to tap A again quickly to um, select play offline, or it's gonna have you try to create an account and you'll be stuck in that loop. It's pretty funny.
perfect. So now we can just go to browse game. We should.